Hey guys, it's Chris from Cook Woods. Today we're gonna take these huge walnut chunks and we're gonna slice them on Slabzilla. We're gonna take them over to the 300 mil and then we're gonna cut them into vessel blanks. So I don't know if you know what vessel blanks are. Some people make urns out of them. Some people make like flower vases and stuff like that out of them. Some people will just cut them to make big bowl blanks. We're gonna take them from these seemingly worthless chunks, some of which have some nice burl on them, some of them don't and then we'll cut them and show you the whole process today. So stick around, you're not gonna wanna miss it. The talent ran away, <laughs> chasing woodchucks. We've got one of the caps in off of Slabzilla. We rotated it up so it's gonna be easier to cut. If you notice, we've got a full dimension two by six that we cut here. These are our dogs for clamping normal eight to 10 or longer logs in here. But because this is short, it doesn't fit into the normal clamp on the sawmill. So we had to get creative. This was the simplest way to do it, also the cheapest. And when we put pressure on it, you'll actually notice it's, it's bending the two by six. So there's probably a 500 to 1,000 pounds of pressure on that. A lot of places aren't going to want to cut vessel blanks or even bowl blanks out of material like this because it's really labor intensive. And then you end up spending your time having your guys move pieces of wood around and you're not turning the blade, you're not cutting, you're not making money. That's also one reason why they can be more expensive because we're gonna spend about well, probably four hours of production to get the same that we would in about an hour of cutting cans, like what you can see on the infeed deck here. Those are all ready to cut, and they'll just cut through really fast and easy because of the right length. Nobody's gonna have to offload. These things, when we cut a piece off, you'll notice probably Marco will be picking these pieces up and moving them, and that just makes it so I can mill faster. We don't get stuff dropping into the hydraulics or causing other problems. You can see some really deep cracks in here, so we'll have to cut beyond that to get to the good wood. We just got these off of Slabzilla. They're big chunks. This is the outside of one of those little burl stump things. And then these are the center cuts. So this is what we're trying to get right here is these wider pieces. I can see some fiddle back. You can see some really nice clear walnut color. I can also see some clay that we cut through, through the $300 blade, and that's why they get dull right there. We thought we had everything out of there. They were pressure washed really well, and yet there's still stuff in here. So we'll clean that out, or we'll just avoid it when we're cutting on the 300. And with a piece like this, I'll get the right tools, and we'll kind of figure out where we're gonna get good material out of it. So what I look for, is just a big clean piece and there's some nice material back here there's some material in here that's pretty nice too we've got some knots and some bark inclusions that are in here so this is probably an area to avoid defect 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 so we typically mark the defects like that just so it's a little bit easier to see when we have it on the mill where the defects are because I'm looking at it from an angle, kind of the way you are right now. And if they're not highlighted, they can be hard to see. So this is the LT300 by Woodmiser. We've had it for quite a few years. It's done an amazing job. Usually heavy equipment like this lasts about 10 years or less and then you need to replace it. I bought this in 2003 and it's still going. 
We've got this one sold. We're going to have a WB2000 that's coming in. It's already made. It's being shipped over from Europe. So we're excited to get that. But this mill has been amazing. We've got 28 inches between the guides. Sometimes we can cheat a little bit and get a little bit wider. But it's got some neat features on it, like the board returns. You'll notice on the videos, the board will just magically push back and hit this conveyor down here. That's what these board returns do. And they bang around, and that's inch steel. And if you notice, that one's kind of bent to the side. So there's some significant force that happens here occasionally. I've got this one cut down to an eight by eight. It's about four and a half feet long. If you notice, it still has some splits in parts of it. This is the process of how we get these big vessel blanks. And right now I've chosen that this is a reject. So we're gonna take it down to seven by seven next and see what it looks like. If that doesn't work, we'll take it down to six by six. But we're starting out with a lot of material. We're gonna end up with a small amount that's the right quality for the project. I went ahead and took this one down to a 6x6 six six because I saw enough defects on the outside that I knew a 7 wasn't going to work for us. So I just saved us the pain. So with the pieces that we cut off, we're hopefully going to be able to yield a few smaller pieces out of it. But this is starting to look pretty good. There's some nice pearl eyes in here. There's still a few defects that are in here. Um, that's the kind of stuff that you can fill with like epoxy resin. Uh, minerals like turquoise and stuff like that. This is a 6x6 six six chunk that we pulled off the 300. I'm going to go ahead and put some marks on it for the upcut saw. You can see this split, it's actually pretty substantial. So all, where all the wood dried out, where it's dark, that's how deep it split. So on the bottom of that down here, we'll get some good material for like 6x6x3 six by six by or 6x6x2s. Six by six by some of them figured, some of them not. But I think we can get one vessel blank up here, roughly, roughly there. So that's about a 12 by six by six. So we'll get one piece out of that giant piece. And this will be usable down here. Rotate that and then show you what we can get out of that. So, so that's about be usable out of that piece right there. Today you saw the process of us taking one of these giant Clara Walnut burls and turning them into these vessel blanks. There was one 8x8x14 eight by eight by that turned out good, the rest of them are 7s, and we got a couple 6s. 
So that really shows you how much waste there is and why pieces like this are more valuable than smaller pieces because we have to waste a lot of wood to get these really high quality cuts out of it. But this one has some nice burl on it. They've all got really good California Claro color. And these greens are gonna mature into these dark browns. It just has to dry on the outside. You can see it's starting to dry here, so it's darker. All those greens are gonna turn into that. So it's gonna be great stuff for your projects. What do you think, Oni? You think, you think it's good? Yeah. All right, that's a wrap. So if you liked the video today, please hit like and subscribe. Please tell your friends. And if you've got questions or things that you'd like to see us make videos on, please let us know in the comment section and we'd be happy to, to make some videos for you. Thanks for watching today.